Current changes in climate, populations and environments are increasingly triggering outbreaks of old diseases and are implicated in the development of new ones. Indonesia is poised to take over from Vietnam as the country hardest hit. The H5N1 virus could still mutate to trigger a global pandemic. Disease spread is occurring worldwide, but is most severe in Africa, where poverty reduces choices. Many of these diseases are transmitted between animals and people, putting the world's poorest communities at particular risk. Rich countries can prevent diseases jumping to people by stopping them in animals. Poor nations can often only afford to control disease when people start to die. Waiting for human fatalities before stopping an infectious disease is a tragedy that continues because many of these killer illnesses emerge in remote areas so are poorly understood and under-researched. Solutions will come only when climatologists, doctors, veterinarians and policy makers begin to work more effectively together. As climates become less predictable and more extreme, new approaches are vital. Without them, a range of emerging diseases, as well as some others traditionally regarded as burdens of the poor, could well spread worldwide. The threat of a pandemic has never been greater. The world is getting wetter and warmer. It's smaller. There's more people moving more places. And ecological resources are degrading. Put these factors together, it's a perfect storm. Health is at risk with climate change. Human health, animal health, environmental health, because it's all integrated. As El Nino events increase, Factors like temperature rises, coupled with rainfall in previously dry areas, may allow some diseases to spread while encouraging others to emerge. Such disease outbreaks often occur in places where emergency services are underfinanced, making fast, effective action by doctors and vets difficult. Rift Valley fever is one of the infections at risk of expanding its territory and becoming more frequent. On the dusty savannas of eastern Africa, where livestock sustain the economy, about twice a decade, Rift Valley fever flips through to decimate the herd. When we have a very wet year as in a dry environment, we see explosions of mosquito populations, and then this virus can really take off and be amplified to the point where we see large numbers of human cases. It would make sense for climate, human and animal health officials and experts to unite to predict weather change, anticipate disease outbreaks and reduce emergency response times. But experts from these fields have traditionally worked independently. Their studies have always been treated as unrelated by funders, researchers and the host organizations where they work. Efforts to create projects which cross these traditional boundaries have therefore been hard and time-consuming to organize. Currently in the funding environment that we have, where donors are thinking about what needs to be funded next year, something that might happen in 10 years doesn't receive top priority until it happens and people start suffering from the disease. A group of scientists think this situation should and can change. 200 experts from East Africa's climate, human and animal health communities took part in eight months of online discussions. 60 got together at the end of 2008 for a workshop. The workshop participants highlighted the need for better collaboration and shared local examples of where this has already made a difference. 
all agreed a key challenge would be to simplify the complex area of information sharing and access. The real problem with reacting to the epidemics is they are so explosive that we just can't respond quickly enough. But if we understood where they're arising well before the sequence of events start to happen, we could actually intervene at those locations and prevent epidemics. This workshop explored some solutions, including revolutionary developments in computer-based tools that offer real-time, easily searchable and usable knowledge critical to better control of global disease outbreaks. Since the workshop, a group of scientists in East Africa has started collaborating on a project promising new ways to manage disease in the region. They will exploit the latest generation of gene sequencing technologies along with the state-of-the-art systems for dealing with the vast amounts of data generated. And until now, we've just had to take species in isolation. For the first time, we can look at the mix of species that any sample, whether it's a, a bit of human skin, whether it's a bit of water, it's a bit of soil, uh, whether it's uh, the insides of a cow's gut, and we can begin to understand how it all works and interacts. And that is going to completely transform biology over the next five to ten years. It will allow us to predict future outbreaks. Maybe with climate change it will allow us to predict new diseases moving into new environments. Uh, and it will allow us to, to understand the way in which pathogens move around an inch of soil a mile of land, an ocean, or an entire globe. By pinpointing the genes of mosquitoes and other disease vectors, while simultaneously defining their biological environments and the pathogens they carry, the project hopes it will, for the first time, be feasible to make sense of the whole disease landscape. Such DNA sequencing studies will reveal where viruses are between outbreaks and the chain of biological events that end up with an epidemic. When linked to advances in climate prediction and the latest developments in human and animal disease treatment schemes, experts will be able to advise on earlier and more rational control measures. Most new diseases come from animals. But nearly everywhere in poor countries, they're first detected in people. We need to use animals as the sentinels for humans, not the other way around. With rising temperatures, there is a very high degree of likelihood that there will be again malaria cases in southern Europe. This kind of democratization of diseases through a global spread will lead to more research and will lead to hopefully a faster cure to these problems than before. And that's good, absolutely good.